Alrighty, folks, we need to talk about the ADP report. Have a conversation about what Mohammed El Arian had to say, Rafael Bostic, the commercial real estate market, Ken McElroy, and an idea that I have for you called Buying Vegas. First and foremost, let me acknowledge that I'm doing this at 6.30 a.m. Pacific, not 7.30. The reason I'm doing that is, is it's important for me to do these live. And I have a 7 a.m. podcast that I wasn't sure would be over by 7.30. So I thought it was important to deliver the daily financial news, even if it was an hour early. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. You are amazing. Let's get into it. What did the ADP report have to say? Remember, folks, this week we are going to get three cuts of jobs data. ADP is first. ADP was expected to come in at 150,000. Last month came in at 110,000. Now, remember, we had a conversation about, hey, if these jobs numbers come in hot, watch out. And if they come in weak, kind of watch out the other way. So what happened? Folks, they came in at 140,000. So uh, they came in weak. Uh, I would argue that the Fed likes this number. Uh, realize, realize that the ADP report has been off the last several months. In fact, the ADP report last month was under by almost 300%. So again, of the three jobs numbers, we got the first one. The second one actually comes out in about a half hour. It comes out at 7 a.m. Uh, it will be the JOLTS report. Again, last month, JOLTS report surprised a lot of people and came in at over 9 million. Again, job openings report. And then on Friday, of course, it is going to be the coup de gras, the big number. Current expectations for Friday are 198. Again, the same kind of theory plays. If we have another monster beat, that will be a problem, meaning rates will go higher. If we have weakness, it will be helpful for the Fed. So we got the first number. We will get the second number in about 30 minutes and we will get Friday's number early in the morning. So that's what we have there. How about Mohammed Alarian? Folks, if you wanna learn more about the economy, one of the things I try to do on this channel is give you names of people you should follow. And Mohammed Alarian is one of those folks. Uh, he is an economist, he is trained, and he has a wonderful take on the complexities of the US economy and the Fed. It is that combination that I believe makes Mohammed special. Mohammed is really, really kind of beating up the Fed. Mohammed's current opinion, my words, not his, is that the Fed is looking backwards. They are looking at the rear view mirror and not realizing the pain in front of them. Specifically, what is Mohammed saying? Mohammed is saying that the Fed is too, too data dependent. That is interesting. Basically, they are going to wait too long. They are going to delay cutting and the US economy will end up in a ditch. That is essentially what I believe Mohammed is saying. Again, my words, not his. Uh, in the end, he does think if the Fed doesn't wise up that the Fed will break something and we will go into a rougher recession that ordinarily would be called for. I think this is interesting. If you've been back on my channel about a year or so, you know that I believe that Jerome Powell's main mission is to break the Fed put. I believe Jerome Powell is using data as a crutch. And frankly, I think Jerome knows what he's doing. It is my opinion that Jerome Powell is already rich. It is my opinion that Jerome Powell has zero interest in being renominated. So he knows he is almost done. So Jerome Powell is now playing for legacy. Legacy is an interesting thing, right? He is, he is playing for the history books. So it is my opinion still that he's trying to break the Fed put. He is leaning on data because data allows him to hire for longer, no cuts, and not let Wall Street yank his chain as past presidents have been. Again, Wall Street is seen driving the bus under Greenspan, Yellen, Bernanke, and the like. Jerome Powell is saying, not so much. At least that is my current opinion. We will see what transpires 
over the last year or so of his term. How about Rafael Bostic? Again, we have lots of Fed speak, lots of Fed speak. Are they going higher? They staying longer? Are they cutting? This is all important stuff. Rafael Bostic is talking one cut, one, that many, this many cuts. And he is also warning that if they do cut, he is concerned about pent up exuberance. What does that mean? Basically, he is like, hey, look at the market. They are over, always overreacting to what we are doing. If we cut once, they will think we're cutting 10 times. Basically, we'll give an inch and the market will yank a foot. I think Raphael is onto something. Just look at what the, mar the market has done for March Fed rate hikes. I think it started the year at 80%, and now it is at something like, I don't know, sub 10%. So again, I think Raphael uh, Bostic and team are on to something. How about commercial real estate? Well, folks, commercial real estate, according to Scott Reacher, CEO of RXR Commercial, it's a commercial giant. He believes that the entire commercial industry is almost through the five stages of grief. According to Scott, the industry has already been through denial, anger, bargaining, and depression. He believes that 2024, specifically the second half of 2024, will be the final grief stage of acceptance. That will be interesting. How can you and I use that idea? Well, folks, we will start to see commercial assets traded. We will have what's called price discovery. Right now, we are living in a world where values are down 20%. Lending is down 46% and transactions are at depression levels down 70%. If Scott Reichler is correct, we will start to see transactions rise. We will finally have price discovery and we can start getting this behind us. Scott also believes that there will be upwards of 500, 500 banks that will fail or be forced to merge because of commercial real estate. Part of this acceptance phase is going to be taking L's and losses. Again, this will allow us price discovery, which will allow us to get values and allow us to move forward. You know what, folks? Let's jump to Ken McElroy. Ken McElroy is doing a wonderful job of trying to help us understand how to get ready for the opportunities ahead. Now, Ken McElroy typically is talking to big, big players, 100 units and above. I want to take his list that I got from Twitter or X and break it down for you and I, right, to take Coach Carson's book, The Small and Mighty Investor, right, one rental at a time. The first thing Ken talks about to get prepared for a recession and the opportunities ahead, you need to build cash reserves. We've been talking about this for a while, right? Lower expenses, increase income, stack paper. Number two, expense management. In this case, he is talking about the assets that you are currently running, but you could also think of expense management as your household. What are you doing? This is not a time to take the 10 or $20,000 vacation. This is the time to take that $2,000 vacation or $200 vacation and save money because what will happen is cash, cash is optionality on deal flow. So again, expense management. Number three, asset capitalization. Basically, find the opportunities, do the work, network, all of those things that we talk about at one rental at a time. You need to expand your skill set. What I mean here is Think about creative financing. Think about what Velocity Mortgage allows you to do with the 50, 40, 10. It's not all about price. Sometimes you will run into sellers that you can structure a deal and overpay in the short term, but get owner financing that is powerful. Uh, you need to preserve relationships. In this case, what Ken is talking about is, hey, maybe this isn't the time to go out and get the last dollar of rent increase. Maybe this is the time to go for um, you know, occupancy and not turnover. Of course, Ken talks about an inflationary hedge. 
Of course, we have that amazing shirt that says inflation is a, uh, what does it say? I forget already. Inflation's a feature, not a bug, I think it says. Or I use inflation to get rich. I guess I have two shirts. That's why I got confused. Anyways, inflation is a hedge. Buy assets indexed to inflation that produce cash flow also indexed to inflation and have 30-year fixed rate debt where possible. Lastly, embrace opportunity. Embrace opportunity. I want to go to what Blackstone, Blackstone has saying. Blackstone sees a generational investing opportunity on the horizon. Now, of course, Blackstone is talking about multifamily and office and big, big commercial stuff. But understand that there is going to be generational opportunity at smaller footprints and smaller unit counts. It just is. The stupidity and the idiocy that I saw over the last couple of years, price points, cap rates, assumptions, deal structures, debt structures, it didn't matter if it was 100 units or 10. There were bad deals done where losses are stacking up. Next, let's talk about buying Vegas. Folks, uh, I released a video yesterday thanks to Omar yesterday night at 7 o'clock called Buying Vegas. Do me a favor, watch that video. Let me know what you think. This is something that I am seriously thinking about spending big money on. Uh, it will be something that is more produced. Uh, but I want to know if you like the idea or if, you should, or if you're like, eh, don't waste the money. So again, do me a favor, check out the video called Buying Vegas. And then folks, let's talk about some earnings because we are getting some earnings in. Uh, we got Foot Locker. Foot Locker did have to rely heavily on discounting or promotions in the holiday quarter. Uh, they gave, uh, they lost some money and they gave weak Q1 guidance. Nordstrom's beat top line, beat bottom line, but again, gave weak guidance. Abercrombie & Fitch gave, uh, beat top line, beat bottom line, gave strong guidance. And then finally, CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike, another cybersecurity company, uh, beat top line, beat bottom line, and raised guidance. So lots of things going on. Let me make sure I've got everything. Oh, one more thing. Let's talk about Seattle, King County. We had Beth Traverso on yesterday, top 1% agent, and she went behind the numbers. I don't know about you, but these numbers are frightening to me. Seattle, King County for February, up 14%. Up 14%. Days on market, down to seven. I don't know what this means. I certainly hope this is not happening across the country. In fact, I don't think it is. I think there are some markets like the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, uh, Seattle, and maybe a few more that are very, very tech heavy. And what you are seeing in these hot markets with no inventory is people that are rich, rich, rich with stock money, buy, buy, buy. Yeah, pretty wild. And again, I think yesterday we talked about a property in Fremont, California, AKA the Silicon Valley, that went for 400K above ask. So again, it is my hope that this wild behavior and drop in days on market is not national. It is very localized, but again, that's why you need to know your buy box, your area, and your data. And then finally, folks, I wanna thank Amini and Stella. Amini and Stella sent me this uh, trophy. It says, or at 50K subs, uh, Vegas 2024. I wanna thank you for this. I received it uh, in the mail, or I got it this morning, and it will be on my shelf. So thank you very much, it was greatly appreciated. Uh, I like my little trophy. Awesome, folks. Take care of yourself. Sorry we had to do this at 630, but it's important for me to do it early and do it live so that we can keep our streak going. Don't forget to buy the course, How to Get Started, One Rental at a Time. I will, of course, throw in the Vegas event. In fact, a couple of you bought it yesterday, so I need to go give you the free Vegas event. If you just want the Vegas event, feel free to use ORAT50K and save 50 bucks. Take care. Bye.